Welcome back to the catch up. It's your host Kat joined by my 5'8", my sparring partner. I like when Timmy referred to me as a sparring partner, so I'm going to start using that. And uh, I guess the guy who knows it all in rugby league, the rugby this, league guru. This is quickly becoming uh, my favourite hour of the week, just quietly, <laughs> Kat. Everything else I do is so serious and stats and predictions and accountability. I absolutely love this hour. We can sit back and have a giggle and most of my life is spent on rugby league social media, as you all know. Uh, so to be able to sit back and talk through the highlights and whatnot, I absolutely yeah. love it. I like that this show is basically just what our chat history on Instagram looks yes. like because we send each other all the funny <laughs> stuff that we see. And so what you're about to see is basically what we've just shared with each other all week. Which is the beauty of it. It's just raw what you do with your mates, what you have a laugh at, what, mm. what you see on the weekend. And, you know, there might be things that we see that you guys might have missed because we're also obviously watching it a lot more closer. And I think some of this stuff too, which we talk about today, even one of these stories, I saw it on the weekend, thought it was funny. Kat actually gave me a heap of context behind it that makes it even funnier now. So we can sort of give you a little bit more detail on those sort of things, a stack to get into today. Yeah. So before we do that though, how was your weekend? What did you do? You obviously watched all the games. Any thoughts? Yeah, had a good weekend. Uh, obviously watched all the games and whatnot. I was in here Sunday night doing content. Uh, we then had, you know, bloke in a bar on a Monday. So a busy few days as it always is, but thoroughly uh, enjoyed my weekend. Now you, was there any grounds that you didn't make it to this weekend? <laughs> you, uh, you, you certainly had some fun. You, you've done a lot in the last few days. I really jam-packed last week. I think um, I don't even know how I got that much done, but I actually only went to the Leichhardt games. I saw Tiger Sharks. I had yep. every intention of going to Belmore. It didn't work out. I think I had an, an event earlier in that day, um, an NBA event, which was really fun, but I couldn't do everything. So. I saw you at soccer games, rugby league games, basketball. Yeah. You were everywhere. I was. And I saw so many league players <laughs> as well. So I um, I got to do a little kind of Q&A um, piece at the – Lebanon Australia game which was a Socceroos game mm. and that was really nice because obviously I'm both backgrounds so it was really yep. cool to give my thoughts on that but then at the game I saw Adam Dewey, Mitch Moses, uh, Robbie Farah so there were a few nice Lebanese league players there and then at the NBA event I saw Josh Mansour, Jason Saab and Kennedy Cherrington and once again, you know, there's your your Lebo in, in Mansour and I guess Saab by association too. So real Lebanese representation going on. Isn't, uh, isn't Kennedy just the best? I think she's, she's hilarious. She's unreal. And they um they interviewed her and Saab together about kind of the NRL season so far and obviously NRLW hasn't kicked off yet, but she is such a great personality. I think there's no better person to promote the game than her. She just ticks every box. I, I, I've seen it a few times live, like Kennedy will be somewhere doing an interview, talking to people and she'll just grab 10 or 15 girls that are there and go, hey, let's do a TikTok. Yeah. And they just love it. They just absolutely yeah. love it. No, she's such a natural uh, with all the social media stuff. She was actually in the running for social media kind of person of the year at the TikTok Awards last That's year. That's unreal. How I know. good's that? And she was competing against the Matildas, which is a whole <laughs> club, oh, a whole country. Sorry. Shout out to Kennedy. We should uh, we should try and get her in here yeah, actually. Yeah, no, I think, I think this show would be right up oh. that alley as well. Kick right. me off, get her on, be yeah. unreal. All right, I'm going to make that happen. Super sad. Um Now, speaking of Leichhardt, it was my first Leichhardt Oval experience mm. and I feel spoiled. I feel like I had a once in – what is a once in a lifetime experience for some people? I was there actually with a friend, Shaq TV, who's a content creator and his girlfriend – and Shaq is a hardcore Tigers supporter. If you follow any of his content, you'd see that any opportunity to go to the training grounds, he's there. But um, he said to me, I've never seen Tigers win live. Home, away wow. games, you mention it, he has never seen them win. So on Saturday night, that was his first time seeing them win. Shout out to uh, Shaq TV. I actually met him a couple of weeks you ago. Did, he yeah. came in here and we got talking and we actually realised that not only did we go to the same school, I was in the year above him and we didn't remember each other nor had ever met each other. So <laughs> funny how that can happen sometimes. Uh, but, yeah, champion fella. Yeah, the Tigers, um, 
you know, it's sort of been a bit, a bit of a running joke, Cat, over the last few years. There was a trial game a couple of years ago where the Tigers smashed Manly mm. and at halftime the West Tigers fans stood up and gave the Tigers a standing ovation. So it's been a big thing in the Hello Sport world about where, where you're allowed to have standing O's or not. <laughs> and when they came off at halftime the other night against the Sharkies, there was a standing O in that game. Yeah. So I had a bit of a giggle to myself. But Tigers, very impressive. I've got to ask you, Leichhardt Oval, mm. um, I love it. I think that it, it the energy that you get at Leichhardt Oval is just second to none. It is mm. unbelievable. Um, you know, people complain about, you know, it's not the easiest place to get to at times when you're looking for parking or like the amenities in there. It's not, you know, 10 out of 10 once you're in there. But I just think the energy and the vibe around the joint makes up for everything. Oh, yeah. As soon as we walked in energy it was jam-packed there it felt a little bit like a like a easter showy vibe yeah it just that's what had it's like. all of the it's food yeah, yeah all of all of the food and, and yeah the carnival vibe yeah. sorry that's more so the word i'm looking for carnival carnival um and then yeah you know, so many people around and obviously so many tigers jerseys but you kind of get a little bit of everyone which is yeah. really cool i think being a local oval uh i walk past leichhardt multiple times a week I live in that area, but I've never been to one of their games. Yeah, and right. I think it was just so cool to see how many people they could actually fit in there. Yep. We were just in the grass area too. So you have to stand up or, you know, you're all sandwiched like sardines, but it's all part of the experience and you can hear every conversation going on around you and all the shit that people are saying. It's hilarious. I'll, I'll tell you a little story about Leichhardt. When, uh, when sort of COVID was really getting into its work and we're all in lockdown and the NRL was in its bubble, uh, playing a lot of games out of Leichhardt Oval. Mm. And um, I had one of, the, one of the absolute legends reach out to me who lives in one of the houses that backs onto the back fence. So when we... We were all watching those games on TV with no crowds. He was actually standing on a couple of uh, uh, cases of beer in his backyard looking over the fence watching them and he invited me over to watch a game awesome. from there and I was I was like, oh, this would be the best content ever but it was when it was still a bit iffy if you leave your house or you're yeah. going into different areas. So I didn't end up going but I thought how unreal would any uh, – the on uh, uh, his bedroom on the top level – had a balcony out the back that just looks over the eighth yeah. wonder of the world, like a <laughs> uh-huh. Uh was unbelievable. Imagine like the entire world can't watch sport, can't watch rugby league during that point and in his backyard he's got the oh. NRL happening. Unbelievable. And it's Leichhardt so we, you know, you're just as close as the actual grass patch. Yeah. We we had that house I think behind us. Yeah, it's, they yeah. had some friends, they were all sitting on their roof. And everybody's making contact with them. Everybody's talking to them like, oh, yeah. bro, what house, you know. <laughs> and it's like where their house is, if you think about Leichhardt Over, like you've got the grandstand on one side and everything and then you've got all the trees around the rest of it. It's just that one open spot yeah. that you can look over the entire thing. It's a, it's an unreal place, Leichhardt yeah, Over. And lucky is. enough, like a lot of Harold Matts and SG Ball games are there. I've probably watched more junior games there than I have first grade games, yeah. which is great because there's a few less people there. So it's yeah. a bit more chilled. Yeah. But the vibe. It's still just the same. It's unbelievable, like art. So you were over on the Wayne Pierce Hill. I was, I was. We weren't quite near the Wayne Wayne Pierce stand. We were a bit yeah. further around the side, um, kind of behind the the light, which yeah. is a bit inconvenient. But we, you know, like you said, parking's a little hard. We parking's were rushing tough. a little yeah. bit to get there. So anyway, it was a great experience. But I bring up the Tigers yeah. because our first story is about the Tigers today. Uh, something that I think. You know, we've discussed, but I'll provide a bit more context on. Then I want to jump into the Para Eels Heritage jersey, which they've Mm. unveiled over the weekend. We've got a footballer that made a surprise appearance in a Stormzy video clip. And I had to tell you who Stormzy was this morning, so that was great. (laughs) Not my proudest moment. Not your greatest moment. We'll dive a little bit more into kind of what the Bulldogs are doing They've released a Monopoly game. They've got a podcast coming out. Just a few cool th- cool things in the social media space. And then um, I want to talk about the Warriors because I think they have set a new standard for social media in the rugby league. And then finally, of course, everybody's favourite, the Guess Who. I'm going to challenge you. This one's from me. I'm going to challenge you to an NRL Guess Who. Now I'm drawing a line in the sand. It from now on is known as the Guess Who. Okay. NRL guess Roo. Now we did uh, we did one of these the other day in the uh, in the Roo crew. Uh, the patrons down below, if you want to join us there, uh, which you can only see in there. And uh, I think Kat thought that she had me stumped. I think I did for a for a moment, but I didn't, did I? 
That was good fun, that one. Oh. Looking forward to another episode. Yeah, That'll be good. I think we're too. one all at the moment. No, I think you're two. It's two one. Yeah, we're two one. Okay, I'll take that. Yeah. Actually, we're two one, but the other one hasn't been released yet. I don't think. Oh, spoiler! True. Oh no! Watch out! Pretend you didn't see that. You Love don't know that. the result. All right. So, speaking of the Tigers game, an amazing win from them. Unreal yeah. job from Benji. He knows what he's doing. We love to see it. I think a shock result in the best possible way. And and selfishly just being at Leichhardt over was an amazing experience for that yeah. one. But uh, at the end of the of the game, obviously the boys are in the sheds, some images were released of them holding A4 sheets of paper singing the team song. I saw ABC Sport reported it saying, you know, when you need the lyrics on paper to sing your team song, mm-hmm. kind of alluding to the fact that they've won so few times that no one knows the, the team song. Yeah, and, you know, I, 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 I hate when media writes these articles and people don't want I mean, I'm sorry, if all those, like the Tigers have got a number of new players over the mm. last two years or so, if the Tigers already knew the song off by heart, wouldn't that indicate to you that they were practising their victory song in the preseason <laughs> instead of training and trying to win games of football? Uh, I actually love it when you see things like this. I think it's very raw. I love that clubs just embrace it. Yeah. Um, I love that clubs don't. Like, like, you know, we, 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 we obviously do a lot of social media stuff and, like, it would be really easy for them to have the words on the wall but then film from a certain angle so you couldn't see it. Yeah. I just love that they just embrace it. They jump in, they get the bits of paper, they read it off and they will get used to it. The more games they win the Tigers, they will get used to it. They'll start to know it off by heart. But um, mm. it's also not an old song, no. correct? No, so I saw comments and I investigated. So it's not their original team song. This is actually a new song and it's made up half of the West song and half of the Balmain song. So this is a brilliant move by Benji to kind of reconnect the club with their history. And I confirmed this. I asked Bud Sullivan, why were you holding an A4 sheet of paper in the sheds? And he confirmed it's a new song and that's why. Love that. See, and good on Benji Marshall. I really like that. Um, I think that a big problem with the Tigers for a long time has been sort of finding a way to merge the two yeah. clubs, which is a very tough situation. Um, so, yeah, I love that. By the way, a little bit off topic. Mm. What about Benji Marshall? Scucks Deluxe. What about the bag of fruit? He looked amazing. <laughs> the way you worded that's gold. All time. Yeah, he always looks great. I mean, you've got to just carry yourself. Don't bring – you're going to comment on how I just said he always looks great, aren't you? <laughs> no comment. I think he does always look great. It looks unreal. <laughs> you know what I love though, Kat, and we spoke about it last week. A week ago, I'm reading articles about how Benji Marshall isn't at training enough and he's not oh, a yeah. full-time coach and it's bullshit. He puts 30 on the Sharks. He puts a nice suit on to go to the press conference. I read an article the other day that was questioning the Cronulla Sharks and how professional they are because they had track suits on. Here we go. Pick a side of the fence and stick to it. Yeah, this is just the media though, isn't it? They, they'll they they'll change the narrative to suit whatever agenda they've got that week. And personally, I think it's early days for Benji, but he's ticking all the boxes he needs to tick right now. And whatever time he decides to get to training, that's his prerogative and, and it doesn't seem to affect anyone. And I think uh, it's all good signs at the moment. I just hope that they can keep it up because uh, it was a great game. They played unbelievably I think they just put on a real show for the Sharks. I think the Sharks, they didn't make it over the bridge. They struggled. No, didn't get over there. El Captain Cook Bridge. Um, Yeah, no, what a great great game to be out there for, by the way. Oh, it was so good. Like I said, I'll I'll go on about it forever. Now I need to do my local grounds experience. So we've got to do Belmore. I've got to go down south, watch St. George. Well, I believe, not a local ground, but I believe you're venturing out to a game of footy this weekend. Of course. Good Friday. Got to, I've got to watch Bulldogs South. I've never been more no- nervous for this clash, if I'm honest. Now, I have suggested to Kat that she does an Instagram takeover mm. and I'm going to really put her on the spot here, which <laughs> is going to put her under pressure to actually do it. So stay tuned to the Guru Instagram because you might get a little Katmandu takeover. Sorry to put you on the spot like that, but I think it's going to be really successful and I think people will love it. And if you do want to see it, Leave it in the comments. Let Kat know how much you would love to see a little guru takeover by, as someone called you in the Roo Crew this week, the cat litter. That's not a great note to... <laughs> not a great one. <laughs> Did make me giggle though. little yeah, bubble bath for me. That is really funny. It is really funny. <laughs> now let's move on because I think <laughs> we're like 15 minutes in and we've talked about one story because this is heavy hitting news of course, but this was... 
oh, I feel like this one has been a little uh, polarizing. Some lovers, mm. some haters, whatever you want to say. But the Para Eels have launched their heritage jersey, and it's it's obviously retro, but it's inspired by their early two thousand teams. What are your thought? What are your thoughts on the blue and gold? in this new kind of design? Um, yeah, the, the jersey itself, I, I, I like it. I, I, the, 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 the collar section I'm a little bit iffy on, uh, but I, I actually thought that Parramatta's approach to this was a genuine 10 mm, out of 10. Like I, the social I, kind of launch? Oh, mate, it was unreal. I, I saw the clip originally, the, the little preview they put out, and I, and like it obviously it started with them putting on the Rugby League PlayStation game. We, we've got it sitting out there, one of the best games of all time. I think it was the 03 Rugby League game, one of my favourites ever. The graphics are the worst things in the world. They had about seven templates of players and they fit everyone hmm. across the NRL yeah. and the Super League. It's ridiculous. Um, players, if you're backwards enough eventually the defense to get tired and you could just run around the outside real old school shitty game yeah but it will always be so special to me and special to a lot of rugby league fans andrew voss on commentary vossy with some absolute gold we spoke about it last week yeah. on the show uh down the hay diddle diddle taking him out like garbage <laughs> bin just some of the all-time greats from vossy on there uh three letters four points that's a try just Unreal stuff. And for Parramatta to bring that back and to use the jersey from that period, I thought it was 10 out of 10. I was sitting there with Hammy yesterday in the studio and we were actually watching the preview. Mm. And Hammy goes, oh, I think it's um, I think there's a player like with the jersey on playing PlayStation. And I went, yeah, I'm not sure who the player is. It, it kind of looks like Nathan Kalos. And then, of course, yeah. it came out, it was Nathan it Kalos. Was. What a nice little touch. I yeah. love that. No, I think to get – the player in as well that you kind of associate with that period of time. You know, you think Luke Burr, Nathan Hindmarsh, all these guys, but then to get an iconic yeah. persona like that to actually put the jersey on. Yeah, a club captain for a long time, Nathan Kalis, one of the greats. I'll never forget the night he actually – he was a front row forward cut that kicked a field goal one night and hit it very, very sweetly, a little highlight there. I don't know if I remember another front row forward ever kicking a field goal. And he was like – he was the guy they went to. It wasn't just a lucky thing. They, they set up for Nathan Kalis to yeah, kick wow. a field goal. And it wasn't like his last game or a, a special game. It was, we need a one-pointer now. Let's go to Nathan Kalis. Give it to Kalis. It was incredible. Uh, so, yeah, I thought Parramatta, they absolutely hit that out of the park. I thought mm. that was content of the week for me. I absolutely frothed it. And shout out to our main man, James, out at the Parramatta Eels. Uh, mate, doing good things, brother, doing very, very good things. Yeah, he definitely is. Things that you love to see. Now I'm going to shake it up a little bit. So mm. as I mentioned earlier, Guru didn't know who Stormzy was this morning and um, – <laughs> I I think you you know you've come to remember who he might be. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Look, all I heard you say was something about Stormzy and Kai Pierce Paul, and I went, "My draft players gone to Melbourne <laughs> Storm." Could you imagine Kai Pierce Paul under Craig Bellamy? This is going to turn my draft season on its head. Uh, incorrect. Yeah, incorrect. So it was on the Knights HQ podcast where um, they had Kai Pierce Paul on and they talked about how he has appeared in a Stormzy video clip. This was 10 years ago. So he would have been pretty young at the time, but it's in the Wicked Skengman 4 video clip. And as somebody who loves Stormzy's music, I had no idea about this, but I love it. I love the crossover. Uh, so Kai actually like, talks about it on on the pod, which is really, really cool. He's in the back behind Stormzy with a hoodie on and it's a good minute of, of Kai Pierce Paul. So it's not just a flash moment, but it's – it got me thinking about media crossovers and what some <laughs> of the footy players have done to in the wider media, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And so I asked ChatGPT mm. to tell me what players have done what in the media space. And I'm going to read some of these out to you. But I also want you to have a think, Guru, about any of your favourite kind of media crossovers with rugby league. Look, you've got the likes of Bo Ryan. It's a, it's a given. Yeah. He's done a thousand things in the media space and he's just killed it. But it's um a lot of players, a lot more than I thought actually, have made cameos in different shows and mm. things. I mean, let's just kick it off with the one that I just think isn't – I don't think it's true at all. And so I'm wondering Ooh. how ChatGPT got this. But they seem to believe that Sonny Bill Williams appeared in the Fast and Furious 9 and the game plan with The Rock. Now – I Googled it. I don't think it's true. 
Yeah, but, I'm calling Porky Pie on that. But Sunny Bill in Fast and Furious, I can kind of see it and I and I kind of like it. You can see him in a tight singlet chain around the neck, like smoke from a car in the background. I can see it but I, I refuse to believe it. I can see him, you know, drifting off. I still remember when I was a kid, Cat. I was about eight or nine years old and um, oh, maybe, maybe I was like ten, 10 or 11 now, I think timing was. Anyway, we were coming back from, we had like a family thing, a family lunch thing over at Cronulla and we're driving past the airport and I still remember mum pulled up to get petrol uh, and I went inside to get a little bag of chips, salt and vinegar, weapon of choice. Yeah, the only flavour that you should be buying. Thank you. I walk in there and um, this would have been 2004, 2005 and Sonny Bill Williams was standing in there. No way. And I almost fucking shit myself. I was so <laughs> excited to see SB Dubs. This is when he was a young superstar. He'd just come in. He had the um, he had the earring in, the stud. He had the hat on on a little bit of an angle. He, he was doing it all SBW and he was the absolute superstar of the time. I mean, he still is the superstar of the time, to be fair. Uh, but I, it's one of those moments I will never forget just walking in and seeing SB Dubs. I think getting stuck into a bag of salt and V as well. Oh, great choice. Well, I like him even more now. Yeah, thank you, right? <laughs> I love that. But there's some other names on here. So Sam Burgess apparently has been on Home and Away, Jonathan Thurston. We know he's made so many cameo appearances in different Australian TV shows. Billy Slater as well, Paul Gallen. And then we've had the likes of Daily Cherry Evans apparently starred in a TV drama series called House Husbands. Have you ever heard about this? Now, I reckon chat G- GPD is doing you dirty here. I don't know what's going on here. And Anthony Mundine was on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here and Dancing with the Stars, both yeah, ring Yeah, was on those. Yeah, yeah. So was yeah. Wendell. So it's getting a little confusing because some are right and some are wrong. I think yeah. there's a bit of poetic license here. And then Nathan Kalis, speaking of the devil, yeah. was on Outrageous Fortune, which is a New Zealand TV drama too, apparently. Yeah, right. Okay, anyway, he's, he's obviously a uh, former Kiwis captain, Kalis, so that one could check out. Could check out. Very interesting. And uh, let's just end it on this. It's a fantastic note. Braith and Asta on My Kitchen Rules. <laughs> <laughs> Braith and Asta, how good. I'm like, man, I know people give Braith a lot of shit and whatnot. I'm a huge fan. I love Braith. Um, talk to him here, here and there on Instagram and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, I just – I got all the time in the world for Braith and honestly – him going on NRL 360, he could have quite easily just become the biggest villain in rugby league yeah. if he wants to. And I just think he has absolutely nailed his role on that yeah, show. He I does agree. so well. Um, I've got a lot of time for Braith. He's got a fantastic story. Um, yeah, huge yeah. fan of Braith. Yeah, I've met him once too and he was he was awesome. But I think we, we often talk about NRL players pursuing that kind of media career after – and Braith has done a brilliant job of transitioning into what – it's not just a punditry role either. He actually can – he can host this yep. content and he, he's very professional and I think you – if you didn't know he had a background in footy, you'd think he's just – you know, a media personality grew up as more of a journo. He's a, he's a real Swiss army knife, Braith and Aster. He actually, he's a very good golfer as well, Kat. You, you talk to people uh, that are in golf circles, they actually reckon he might have been a better golfer than a football, wow, golf which circles. is crazy. He's one of those guys, people give Braith a, a, a lot of shit for his foot, footy career and whatnot, but man, Braith was a premiership winner. He's the yeah. captain of multiple clubs. He played for the Kangaroos. He played for New South Wales. Um, Bra- Bra- Braith was an absolute superstar coming out of uh, Marcel and Ramwick mm. and he you know, he was a premiership winner with the Bulldogs in his first few years as How a 5 yeah, yeah, incredible. Such a good player, Braith and Asta. Yeah. Um, I, I think that... He uh, he came like he he came in with the same sort of hype that like a Luke Brooks did and achieved a lot early and I think people will say that Braith's career probably didn't hit the heights it should have but I disagree I thought he had a fantastic career Braith always been a good fella uh, mm. captain the Roosters captain the Tigers um, but I I personally think Braith is going to have a much bigger impact on rugby league similar to like Matty Johns and stuff. Yeah post game because the stuff he does I agree. is tremendous. But I think he offers something different to the likes of yeah. Matty John. Doesn't too. sit on the fence, doesn't. No. He's very, yeah, he speaks his mind, Braith, and he's, he's not afraid to disagree with the people on the panel with him. Uh, but I think he's always very fair. I think he's also got his his fingers in a few pies. Like he's obviously, you know, the manager of Cam Munster, Lockie Elias. These are guys who are in have been in the headlines a lot over the last mm. 12 months. And I think the way Braith has navigated it uh, has been very, very impressive. A real family man, Braith, and doing a lot of – Good things off field with uh, men's mental health as well. So yeah. shout out to Braith. I'm a huge fan. 
Yeah, me too. And he's um loves a workout in the garage. If you follow him on social media, yeah. Well, that, and part of that is is the mental health yeah. side that Braith is doing. Um, that garage is uh, down in Coogee, I believe. Yeah. Um, I think he's he's a Coogee local. Yeah, he's a Coogee local. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's uh, yeah. Uh, Yes, he, he is a Coogee local, Braith, um, and yeah, just doing fantastic things. I've it's ticking a lot of boxes, Braith. He, he's a bit like an onion. There's a lot of layers to yeah. Braith. Yeah, and the more you get to know him, the more you see, uh, the more impressive uh, he is. And he's a guy, you know, he, yeah, he's he's had a reasonably tough trot over the last few years with a, uh, a divorce and everything, but he's just he's done really well with himself, no, Braith. I'm really happy for I, him. I agree. I think he's a great example for emerging players who want to pursue a career like that to yeah. see how they can do it and how they can bring a lot to the table with their experiences, but. Now, we, we discussed the Knights HQ podcast, which you should definitely check out if you are a Knights fan or just want to know the stories of that team. But the Bulldogs are also releasing a podcast, which is hosted by former player Josh Reynolds, which I think is really, really cool Rob. to kind of keep yep. it in the family. It's called Beyond Belmore. That's launching soon. But I wanted to bring up this Bulldogs Monopoly game, which has just come out. Yeah, They're going to be sending me one, which I'm really excited for. So we'll obviously sit down and... And play it could be the last time we ever talk if it's a traditional <laughs> monopoly game. But um, who do you think would be the Mayfair of the Bulldogs monopoly? Yeah, really good question. Uh, we actually when we went up to do the live show with Ko with the Dolphins, they actually had a Dolphins monopoly, and obviously they've been only been around for twelve months. But so like we we're having a look at who who was placed where, and you know, obviously if if you get the Blues up the top, you're sitting pretty. But yeah, if you if yeah. you got the Browns down the bottom, a bit of a kick in the dick if you miss the board <laughs> entirely, especially with the Dolphins where you've only got a squad of thirty that have ever existed. Yeah. Um, that was pretty funny to ha- have a look at that. I think Hamiso was the top dog oh, on that, that one, which sense, was yeah. fair. Um, or maybe it was maybe it was Wayne and Hamiso actually, which makes complete sense. Doggies. Um, I reckon up the very top of the Canterbury Bulldogs, I think you would have to have the great Steve Mortimer, obviously the father of Andrew Mortimer, Mort's of Blue Wealth Property fame, who's a fucking legend. I love him. But I think I would have to have Stevie Mortimer mm-hmm. as the number one. Number two. Number two is interesting. That's where, Kat, you're probably starting to look at your Hazamel Masri's, um, your Andrew Ryan's of the world. Um, you got a few options there. Did, did, did you have a standout one that came to you straight uh, away? I mean, the first I agree with. You can't, yeah, Stevie you can't, Mortimer. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's Mort's. What do you think I would say? Let's just remember where I'm from, my background. Of course I'm going to say El Masri. El Masri. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very fair shout. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I tell you what, I would love to, and I, I don't think anyone will ever get on top of Turvey, uh, but, geez, it would be great if in 20, 30 years we're looking at Bulldogs Monopoly going Crichton, Burton. Yeah, wouldn't that These be sort cool? of guys, that would be unreal. I'd love to say it. Yeah, do you Andrew think Ryan. Any, any of the current guys get a spot on that board? Oh, I think Stephen Crichton well and surely yeah, could. I think yeah. Matt Burton well and surely could. Like this is the whole thing that they've got talented players yeah. there. Yeah. you just got to start to turn the top. And this is the whole thing. If if Burton and Critter are the guys to bring a very proud club like Canterbury out of these dark days, mm. that means a lot. Like if they're the next, if they if they are the next team and the players to win a premiership for the Canterbury Bulldogs, first one since '04. Yeah, yeah. bloody oath they yeah. get on that board. Now I am having a little look here and as it turns out a few of those guys have actually made it onto the board. So we've got oh, really? a few young and old um, iconic players like James Graham and Terry Lamb but then we've got – Oh, my God, I forgot Terry Lamb. Yeah, no, we've got sorry. Burden, oh, S- shit. Mortimer, of course. Yeah, it's got to be Mortimer and Terry Lamb, Barbar yeah. for sure. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, what a bed shit by me. God, that's bad. Yeah, people, Bulldogs fans just scream. If anyone in the wants comments. the Guru account, reach out. You're going to have it. <laughs> I'm in all sorts. How dare I? Anyway, so looking forward to getting that game in and we'll. Yeah, I'm keen to see. We'll, yeah, so, so what? It, does it tell you? Did you know who's on all of them already or just some of them? No, just some, some of them. them. Yeah, I'm okay. sure it, you can actually probably zoom into the board and just see it, but I kind of want. 
a little bit of a surprise when I we like open that. it the yeah. first time. We should make some content out of that. Oh, yeah, and we will. We if anyone will. else, if any other teams out there have uh, their Monopoly, please reach out, send it to us. We would love to do a live reaction. That is unreal content. Yeah. I'd love to do Do you know do what that. I've just seen? I zoomed in a little bit. Curiosity killed the cat, as they say. Uh, and I saw Crossways Hotel, which is my my best friend's local pub. Love that. And I know the players go there. I've never actually been there at the same time as any of the players, but a few that I've met in passing, they'll always bring up the crossways. Yeah, it's love a bit that. iconic. Unreal. All right, let's move on because um, while we're still on the Bulldogs, I want to talk about Winston Neville. We've had Winston on. We did our Bulldogs 17 preview as we were heading into the season. Yeah. But Winston is one of the most passionate Bulldog supporters I've ever seen in my life. But not just that, the content that he produces is high quality. He does awesome things with it. And I think he brings attention to all the right things in in the game and, yeah. and across the team. But he collabed with the Bulldogs to do a piece on six different nationalities within – the team. So he went out and asked people who were at Belmore over the weekend, can you name six different nationalities across the team and the players and all that kind of stuff, obviously tying in the multicultural theme of the weekend. But I love this from Winston. The content is amazing, but it's just so great to see clubs collabing with passionate supporters. Yeah, and, you know, full credit to Winston. Um, you know, like you'll you'll see him appear on the Bulldogs page and go, oh, yeah, good on him, that's an overnight thing. Like, no, Winston's been grinding for years yes. and years and years doing this sort of stuff. Uh, he's got his podcast, The Orange Peelers. Go and check it out. Does great things. We had him sitting in here a few weeks ago. Spoke to him last night. Uh, a young guy in content that I've got a lot of time for. Yeah. Um, I can talk about it now because it's already happening and stuff, but I caught up with Roasty a couple of months ago and we were just sort of talking about the content space and mm. who we like and whatnot. And at that point I didn't know too much about Winston mm. and, um, mate, Roasty gave him a huge rap as someone in content that he thinks has got a lot of ability uh, and a lot to offer and it sort of made, it sort of put him on my radar a little bit. I uh, started to watch him then. And I've just been so impressed with him and obviously meeting him. He's such a good kid. He's yeah. fantastic. Um, and now you can see also the Bulldogs are clubbing with him, but Roasty's done a lot of things with him as well where he's sharing a lot of those things as well so uh just just full full credit to Winston and you know what it's like it's easy to make content when your team's high flying and you're winning games Canterbury have been absolutely struggling and yeah. Winston is just there week in week out so full credit to him and I love I absolutely love that the Canterbury Bulldogs have looked around the room and gone okay who's the most passionate dude we can find who can we work with and they've gone out and instead of just getting a former player and sticking a mic in their mouth They've gone and found someone that is passionate about the club, someone that is on the ground, someone that is one of their fans and lent into it. I love that clubs are doing this. I think yeah, it is too. unreal and I think that if you can establish yourself as the you know the biggest fan of that club, I think they would be crazy not to lean into it. Yeah, and also he's so likeable and he's got a great reputation. People yeah. enjoy his content. He literally rates hot dogs as how many let's trots out of 10. <laughs> a guy like that is unreal. Like yeah. that, that's perfect content for them. You love to see good people in rugby league doing well and Winston is definitely, definitely one of them. Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely stoked with him. Shout out to you, brother. I know that you watch this show. Mm -hmm. yeah, he messaged me every week after this one. He loves it, Kat. So shout out to you, Winston. We should actually get him in for one of these. He'd actually be really good on one of these. He's a good you know personality what? for it. Maybe post Good Friday we can get him on and we can uh, relive the Bulldog South experience a little I bit. I like that. Winston, reach out to us, mate. Uh, reach out to us. We, we should we'll do get, that next yeah, week. We'll get you on next week or the following. We'll figure it out. But, yeah, um, gone. Yeah, no, we love Winston with an I. Winston without a Y. <laughs> All so right. That, 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 that ad, it is going to withstand the test of time I unbelievably. So. It's yeah. kind of like the here the you know the hearing hotline or whatever that one. One three double oh six triple five oh six. What's your How, favorites of all time for those? Like Tip Top's the one. Thank you, Mum. That one still sticks with the me. The one like the not happy Jan ad. Not happy Jan. That was a cracker. Quoted that a lot. Uh, you can do what you want to do at Perisher Blue was yeah. always a good one. I think for me one of the most iconic pieces of advertising is the Quant the earlier Qantas ads. Like mm. I used to legitimately cry at my TV. Like, um, I'm so proud to be Australian. When I, <laughs> when I, I remember when I got on the plane last week um, at, uh, at Brisbane to come home, I was with Hammy and we're standing there looking at the plane. It's Qantas and he goes, man, the flying guru. There's something in this. And I just went, oh, honey, I'm too tired. Leave me alone. Oh, my gosh. But we one need day. a Qantas. We need a Qantas partnership. Well, I'm sure I'm sure that everyone at Qantas is tuning in. So <laughs> that'll be great. The flying route. Tag Qantas, guys. Love that. 
All right. I love it. Now, speaking of social media, what the Bulldogs mm. are doing, I think there is no question that the clubs have all upped their game over the last two seasons. Specifically this season, I feel like there is just so much more emphasis on the content and what they're doing week to week from the the manly way, like a deeper dive content series to what I wanted to highlight, which is what the Warriors are doing just on their social media, their reels, their TikTok. The content is just unbelievable. The quality is so great and the creativity behind it too. They did a post for Fenua Blake, which was this kind of dra- – it, it made me think of Dragon Ball Z and anime mm. and had that real kind of Japanese cartoon feel. Um for that amazing move that he did over the weekend. But the comments were just saying that there needs to be a Dalian for social media in the in the NRL. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, and like I just think the social media and rugby league has just taken off over the last few years. And I think your teams like the Warriors, Parramatta, uh, they really have just taken it to a new level over yeah. the last few years. And it's been because they've brought the right people inside. Uh, the Warriors, they are moving the needle Um Vintage Jackson, who was at YKTR, one of the great blokes of all time, he's made the move over there and he is absolutely dominating in that yeah. space over there. Jackson is killing it. He's made a it. real impact. Oh, he's made a huge impact. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's it's very, you know, does it impact on-field uh, play? Probably not, but just the vibe around the place is so much better. The Warriors is something you want to be involved in now. Mm. The Warriors is a team that you want to be successful and I think it's because you can also connect with their content. And you know what? They do the Japanese anime stuff which is cool but then they also like to me they did a Seinfeld reference a couple of weeks yeah, ago they did. which I absolutely love that gets to me straight away um, you know and it, did, it didn't mean a stack to me but like when they released their heritage jersey the other day they did the photo shoot in like a milk barn and like in my group chats we sort of went What's that? I don't get it. But then from talking to Kiwi people, they went, fuck, that's us. Yeah. That's what we're – like they just get it, the Warriors. They just – they know what their brand is. They know what their voice is. They know what kind of makes them them. Yeah. And they just – they just know. They tell the story so well. Yeah. But I also wanted to highlight that you could be a Seinfeld guru if you weren't the rugby league guru. (laughs) We, uh, we went to a Seinfeld uh, trivia one night a couple of years ago. Shout out to Tommy Spencer. I know he'll be watching as well. Uh, I think there was 57 teams. We came fourth. So it wasn't a bad knock. Uh, Not a bad yeah. knock at all. Do love my Seinfeld. Yeah. Greatest show of all time. I, I won't I'm convinced that got me the job here too because um, – It didn't hinder. More, more or less – you know, I was somewhat raised on Seinfeld. It was always on at home as well. And um, don't mind the odd Elaine dance here and there, oh, you the know, when I'm out. And yeah. the little kicks. It's yeah. funny, like, showing my little brothers, who are, my little brothers are like 17 and 19, but for them, they've never grown up in a world without mobile phones. And yeah. pretty much every Seinfeld episode that ever existed is solved by having a mobile phone. <laughs> and they just don't, they just can't understand it, you know what oh, I mean? That's good. Which that's I think is unreal. Yeah. Love, love Seinfeld, always will. Yeah, me too. And while we're in Hollywood and we're on the Waz, Jack Black, did you know? Apparently <laughs> he supports the Waz, but apparently he also supports Penrith or, you know, whatever jersey he's handed at any specific time. Man, how good's Jack Black, eh? He is no. absolutely timeless. Um, he is timeless. I'll tell you what, if you're looking for a good little follow, go to his social media, his Instagram. Is it really funny? Oh, hilarious. Does some unreal shit on there, especially especially during COVID. He did some sick stuff. Uh, I've never met a guy who has less shame. He is just yeah. – oh, sorry, I make it out like I've met Jack Black. Definitely <laughs> haven't. Um, <laughs> that was fucking stupid. It's, it's actually like you had dinner together and yeah, you were really like we moved just hang by out. the conversation. Yeah, mad, sick one. Um, yeah, <laughs> I absolutely love Jack Black though, huge fan. Uh, I remember as a kid really won me over in the School of Rock. Yes, I was going to bring up the School of Rock. Mm, great flick. Because I, I think for our age group that movie was iconic. Like I think I watched it. Yeah, a thousand times. You know, uh, you know, two of the kids from that are married now. To together. each other. Yeah, to each other. Yeah, they, oh, they wow. met on that set as children uh, and are married together. The the kid that played the drums. Um, and the blonde girl. Yeah, and the blonde girl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm pretty sorry, sure. I, just, I accidentally. Sh- I was so distracted the by show, the Timmy. story. I showed empty Timmy's chair. That's he's offering really cool. as much as he does on Supercoach <laughs> anyway, so that's fine. <gasps> Duck wow. eggs. Wow. You know what I like about that is that they were a bit of an item in the movie too. Yeah, like they were. You, you yeah. got the feeling you were that like, Ooh. they could have a future together. And, yeah. Well, here we Love are. Love to see that. Anyway, Unreal. so Jack Black was wearing a Waz jersey. Yeah. 
because he appeared on Hit Breakfast, which is a radio show over there. He's promoting um, the new Minecraft movie. So he's been actually living in New Zealand with, well, not with, well, maybe with, but Jason Momoa is obviously there for this as well and a few other actors. But, um, yeah, he, so he was introduced to Kiwi culture on the radio show and obviously The Warriors is a huge part of that. couple of questions. I hope First I have the all, answers. There's a Warcraft movie? Minecraft. Minecraft movie, sure. Mm-hmm. And you say the new one, does that mean there already is? The upcoming one? Minecraft movie. Okay, right. Let's not yeah. overcomplicate this. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very interested. I haven't heard anything <laughs> about that. That's mad. But, uh, yeah, uh, in the Waz jersey, Warriors, see an opportunity, take it with both hands, shock me. Yeah. Sorry, I got my I got my wires crossed there. He's living in New Zealand to film the Minecraft movie. Gotcha. He's promoting Kung Fu Panda 4. They've got four movies out of yeah. Kung Fu Panda. What a knock. <laughs> Christ, that's impressive. Anyway, I'm glad that I could figure that one out for you yeah, guys. For good. those at home, um, would hate to mislead you with that information. That's good. Love Jack Black. Unreal. <laughs> Me too. All right. Now, my favourite social clip of yours last week mm. was actually, funnily enough, it was as I was leaving Leichhardt Oval, I opened up my phone and saw you just reminding everyone of Nico Hines' performance and the fact that you traded Valentine Holmes in and, yeah. you know, it was a great decision from you. A risky move. You were – there were a lot of comments saying that you shouldn't mm. have done it and it was a real test of the guru's power but um, you made the right choice. Talk, talk to us a little bit about that clip but then I also want to know what was your favourite social media highlight of the week. Yeah, look, I was a pig in mud on Saturday night. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, and look, uh, sometimes you make these big plays and they work out. Sometimes they don't. Uh, you might remember 12 months ago when I told people not to buy Nico Hines. He came out and scored 180 and absolutely fisted me. So you win some, you lose some. And you might remember as well that time last year, I got it completely wrong. I was way off the mark, Cat. I jumped straight on social media and said, hey, best sledge in the comments. You'll get a prize on beers and break evens this week. So when it's going well, you got to enjoy it. When you're going shit, though, you've also got got to enjoy it you got to embrace it as well and br- bring the licks on yeah. uh so it goes both ways but uh yeah that nico Hines thing at the time it couldn't have actually worked out better Hines dropped a heap of cash uh val holmes is the second highest scorer of the week i had him as vc got a stack of points uh val holmes made 100k this week nico Hines lost 100k and will continue to lose money uh but now and we'll talk about it more in beers and break evens but with all these injuries to cleary to mm. Mitch Moses. Halfback's a bit of a shit fight now and having Nico Hines might not be a bad option. We went from having all of these halfback options yep. to, well, now, you know, if you have Nico, that's great. And if not, you're fucked. Yeah. Be- Potentially, yeah. How dare you? I whispered that. Yeah, I whispered, whispered it. That. Um, but, yeah, Nico Hines has a buy in two weeks as well. So <laughs> it's going to be a really interesting time. It's, it's amazing how Supercoach does this. It just yeah. gives us the most ridiculous situations it sure of does, all time. Because last week I was – at the top and this yep. week I'm back where I belong. Yep, good. Glad to see it. Get out <laughs> of my chair. Never again. Um, but, yeah, that, that was good fun. Uh, put up the social reel, just taking a bit of uh, the piss out of the people that had a crack at me. Did really well, like for a super coach post to get 100,000 yeah, views. Well. Don't say that very often, so I was absolutely stoked with that. Uh, and, yeah, just good content. Once again, uh, when you're right, I'm going to rub it in your face. When I lose, though, I'm going to rub it in your face to give me shit about it, mm. which I do quite often. Look at your Tyrell Sloan, your uh, your Sonny Luke. So enjoy it when you're on top and take the piss out of yourself when you're on the bottom. It's like always my it. approach. And that, I think that's a great attitude to have. Because mm, I'll be on the bottom heaps. Don't worry about that. My time <laughs> will come. Yeah, I feel like some people write their insults in their notes when you do well and then they're ready to post it when you do badly. And credit to them because I deserve it because I rub it in your face when I'm on top. Plan ahead. Yeah. Plan ahead. I back it. Good on you. So tell me more more widely, did you have anything that you particularly liked on the social media front this week? I'll tell you what, Kate, you've done a really good job covering um, a lot of things already. I thought that the – I thought that the Parramatta Eels thing was probably my highlight of the week. I really, really enjoyed the way that they went about that. Um, I'll tell you what else I'm liking. Um, The show, and you have to forgive me, I'm shooting a blank on what it's called to get it for you now. The show that like Ryan Pappenhausen and Cameron Munster are doing, um, I think it's called Oz American Highlights or something. I actually shared a clip from it last night. I'll get the name of it here. But I like that the boys are jumping on and doing that sort of stuff. Uh, the page is called Oz 
Osmericans. Osmericans, is that it? Osmerican. Osmerican Aces, sorry. God, that was tough. I made that look hard. Osmerican Aces. <laughs> that was real tough. Um, go and have a look that, at it. Man. The boys jumping on there, talking each week in a podcast and whatnot. Obviously, Cam Munster, we have no idea what's going on here. We had the little leak of Cameron Smith last week that we yeah. spoke about, talking about he doesn't know when he's going to be back. And it's just it's good to hear just the players talking openly about this. Yeah. If okay. you hear that clip from Cam Munster... He actually opens by saying, it's really good that I'll be playing this year. Oh, I'm hopeful to be playing this year or something, which was really worrying. So, so someone actually sent me a message yesterday that the way that he read it, which I hope is on the money, was that it was in response to Pappy's question who wasn't able to play last year. Yeah. So I'm hoping that's the like context. Like the context is really important in this one. That's not how I took it when I yeah. first heard it, but I'm starting to wonder if I just misunderstood the context. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully uh, Cameron Man- Munster back in the next few weeks. But I love the boys are jumping on the mic and talking like that. I think it's unreal. Um, yeah, that was probably my highlight from this week, seeing the boys and the Parramatta stuff. Anything else that jumped out to you? I mean, there was loads. There's so much content these days, and I'm yeah. absolutely loving it. But I'll agree with you. I love. I'm such a sucker for that more deep dive content. Yeah. You know, I, I love knowing the behind the scenes. This is in everything. Like I've I've always been like that. If there is anything behind the scenes, I'm going to watch it. So uh, I think it was obviously these podcasts you're talking about. The Knights Pod, um, Manly released their episode on Las Vegas. They beat the Rabbitohs. So I was really curious to know what they did that week that made them so much better than us. It was a great game regardless, but I, I love that type of stuff. So it was really, really, really cool to to get a bit of their POV of that week because it was such a different experience for these teams as well. I have got a few things I want to throw yeah, in here. I've just looked it. through my archive stories and there's some absolute – cracking content that I loved. One was from the Gold Coast Titans. Um, they had coach Desi Hasler. They're going through a tough trot at the moment, the Titans, but they had Desi Hasler in their offices. And there's a um, there, there's a man that they've sort of got that helps out on their staff who's um, who's got some form of uh, um, disability, but he's mm. a real high energy guy. He just loves it. And there's a thing of Desi Hasler showing him a secret handshake and then his hat falls off and Desi puts it on his head, goes to walk away and then gives it to him. And just, just a really nice high Awesome moment there that I really enjoyed. Top shelf by the Titans. Um, The other one that caught my eye that I really liked, and now that I think about it, this is probably actually my top little bit of content for the week. Cam Murray played game 150. Yeah. Or 150. Or 200. 200, hold on. 200 wasn't, I think. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, incredible player, Cam Murray, obviously. But oh, they, it was 150, sorry. 150, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they had a – he's still very young, Cam Murray. It's actually unbelievable he's at 150. Yeah. Um, how old is Cam Murray? What, 25, 26? 1998, so 26. Oh, my God, that's off its head. Um, Cam Murray, they had a clip of him playing for his, his local side, the Mascot Jets, obviously Mascot Oval, about 400 metres this way, playing for the Mascot Jets, and he sort of makes a half break and then it flips to Mm -hmm. a highlight of Cam Murray playing for the South Sydney Rabbitohs and the way that they timed it up and the way that it clipped, it was just perfect. That was probably my favourite bit of content from the entire week. It was sort of lost in all the South Sydney, you know, shit fuckery and whatnot and their big loss to the Roosters. But I thought that Cam Murray clip was absolutely all time. So shout out to the South Sydney social team. Uh, probably didn't get the attention that it should have because of how it all played out with South Sydney, but that was probably my favourite clip. And maybe I'm a little bit biased because he's a mascot jet and all that sort of stuff, but I just love local guys that come through their junior clubs and go on to not only play first grade, but in my opinion go on, will go on to be club legends. He's already the club captain. Incredible stuff. Oh, it's the best type of story. It's what I love that in any sport. Yeah. And and especially in footy because it is such a local game in that sense, the connection between grassroots and the professional level, it's definitely there and you can see it in the history of a lot of these players. Uh, so, yeah, super special and, and I think it's a good point that it was – probably missed a little bit due to all of the other stuff that was going on. And I'm also glad that you didn't ask me about that game on Friday. I really, really appreciate that because <laughs> none of those were my highlight, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, best to uh, best to leave that one yes, in the yes, back yes. seat. All right, now to everybody's favourite segment. It's Guess Roo where I provide the guru with up to six clues to guess which player I'm thinking about. Are you ready? I am ready. I, uh, I've got the six clues. I like to get it by about three or four. That's yes. sort of the standard. I obviously like to get it full stop. 
but I like to get it by the three or four count. Yeah. So I fingers think crossed. You've set the bar for yourself at that. Yeah. And I respect it, but you do have six should you need them. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. good to have it in the back pocket. All right. Let's dive in. I was born on the 3rd of November, 19, 1983. 1983, so we're looking at about 40 years of age, Kathmandu. Correct. If my maths is correct, which I'm a big maths guy, <laughs> 40 years of age. Okay. That, so, yeah. so a retired player. Mm-hmm. That's mm, another Makes it tough. I like that. That was technically another clue, but we'll let it pass. I have represented both New Zealand and Samoa on an international level. Samoa and New Zealand. So did you say that another clue was that the player was retired? Yes. Was that one of the clues at 40 years of age this player's retired from the No, NRL? because you said, oh, they're retired and I said yes, but technically that's another clue. Cheers, Kat, really helpful. All right, 40 years of age, New Zealand and Samoa representative. Yep, next. I have played for numerous clubs throughout my career, including Penrith Panthers, Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, Parramatta Eels and... Hull FC. Okay, journeyman, 40 years of age, played internationals for New Zealand and Samoa, three clubs in the NRL and one stint over in England. I think I've got a general idea of who it is, but I'm going to just take one more clue to be safe. All right, so that would be our fourth clue. Fourth clue coming now? Coming now. Okay, that's okay, yep. I believe. I retired from professional rugby league in 2017. It's a shit clue, but anyway. I mean, I I guess it tells me you played for a long time, sure. Um, Okay, retired in 2017 and this is clue number four. The guy I'm thinking of, I'm actually – he played for so long that I'm actually shooting a bit of a blank on when he actually retired. Mm. I'm pretty confident I've got it, but I do not want to risk – Losing it. So I'm going to take clue number five, Kat. Okay. We can do that. What have we got? Oh, this might give it away. But I was known by the nickname. Oh, if he's got a nickname, I know who it is. Okay. If he's got a nickname, I know who it is is because it's one of the great nicknames of all time. It has to be Frank the Tank. Correct. Yeah, good. Yeah, well done. Frankie Pritchard, how good. You didn't – I don't even think that 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 last clue really counted. No, no, no. We, uh, if you start okay. the sentence, we have to because it's what okay. confirmed it for yeah, me. Fair. So we got that one in five. Still a pass, but not to the standards we like to have. I was thinking Frank earlier, but geez, like when, when I think about guys that are like 40 years old, trying to place when they retired and everything, it's just because yeah. he jumped around so many clubs, I was trying to work it out. Uh, but, mate, Frank was such a good footballer. Doing a lot of very good things in rugby league as well at the moment. Frank, I believe he's actually working maybe for the Dragons in yep. their junior development. Um, yeah, so he's one of those players who kind of moved into coaching and everything yeah. post-retirement. So he's he's remained in the sport. Yeah, I think he does a bit with the RLPA too potentially. Uh, do it, one of the good guys, Frankie Pritchard, uh, was his younger brother was actually playing for Parramatta a couple of years ago, oh. Kaiser Pritchard, who was uh, just – I think he had to retire early because he had too many injuries, just too tough for his own good Kaiser. But uh, Frank was an absolute weapon, one yeah. of the better back rowers I've ever seen. Could play in the middle as well, but an incredible – offload uh very very good fella frankie pritchard yeah. went to hull did he is that what you said yeah he he spent a year 2016 he was in hull came to Parramatta for the 2017 season which i believe he only played about eight games and, mm. and he retired that same season so yeah i think that was the sort of period where they brought in like anthony watmo and those sort of guys mm. as well it didn't didn't pan out overly yeah. well yeah. uh that sort of period but uh yeah frankie pritchard frank the there tank you go. and so you're i just looked it up he's he's got the head coaching role with the St. George Dragons for the Harold Matz team. Harold Matz, yeah. And he's also um, a coach on the Patrician Brothers Fairfield Rugby League team, which is the school my dad went to. So oh, I love just that. thought I'd awesome. share that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> Shout out to Frank the Tank. Very good fella and a very, very good footballer. Yeah. Is that us done and That's dusted? us done, guys. So thank you for tuning in to the catch-up. I think we covered – We touched on most teams today, which was really cool. But once again, guys, for episode next week, let us know if there's things you want to talk about. Send in anything that kind of caught your eye on social media. And if you've got a guess who for Rue, if you've got a guess Rue. Guess Rue. Because I want want to get that right. Please send it in. I love it when it comes from you guys because I feel like 
you know, it's an opportunity for you to challenge him yourself. Minimum 50 games played. Don't pick me some guy from your high school that I've never heard of and <laughs> probably no one's ever heard of, respectfully to them. Minimum 50 NRL games. But the challenge I think is in your questions, Kat. Absolutely. You make them really specific. Um, for example, you know, if you want to tell me which clubs he played for, if he played for four clubs, just tell me two of them. Yeah. Make it interesting okay. like that. Are you, I, I think that's are you the critiquing way to go about my it. questioning? Well, no, I'm saying to them. Okay, because it but sounds yes, a little bit we'll like We'll have a private point. review a little bit later <laughs> where we'll sit back and watch the tape and talk about a few things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Can't wait for that. <laughs> That'll uh, be good fun. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. Rue, thank you for joining me once again. Uh, next week we'll look to get someone else on. Over the coming weeks it's definitely something we want to start doing, getting that third perspective on all the stories that we're talking about. But until then... We'll see you across the Patreon. Don't forget to sign up to the Roo Crew. There's so much content. We do some of these guest Roos in there as well. So that's good to keep Roo on his toes. And then, um, of course, we've got all our regular episodes and content coming up this week. So stay tuned for that. Adios.